Happy Homebrew Wednesday, guys. I don't do these too often anymore. It's just can't put out regular content. That's too busy. Uh, so uh, I don't number them, I just date them. Anyway. Also an, a national homebrew competition update. I have two entries, uh, the first time I've ever done it. A little under the gun here on one of them. It's my Black Betty. And because I'm going to Italy for a little while, I don't know if it's going to be too soon to send it. We'll see. I, I have to get it out by, I think, the first, and I only just brewed it two days ago. It's fermenting really well, and I'll show you that right now. Okay, just got home. It wasn't doing this when I left. Well, it's only gone for a couple hours. Um, I just started cleaning it up and just doing this volcano thing. Uh, so I got to go find a tube that'll fit in there. Yikes. So I hadn't thought about the, you know, needing a blow off. I don't know why I didn't think of that being a problem. But the size that's in here is not standard for this. So I was concerned because I was like, crap, do I have anything that's going to fit in here? And apparently what fits in there perfectly is the keg line, uh, the beer out keg line. So FYI, if you guys don't already know that. Cheers. Okay, as you can see, it's going kind of crazy. Even since then, I've had to take the blow off tube off because it was actually building up pressure. So I'm just letting it volcano and I'm mopping it up as I go. It's the only thing I can do right now. Thing is insane. That's just Nottingham yeast. I probably should have used a bigger vessel. That's uh, what, six, six and a half gallons, seven gallons. Um, I have the Blickman that I could have used, uh, which is 14 gallons. Also, I got in an accident here with the glass carboys. I'll show you what happened. Yeah, so I cut my hair pretty good, but um, it's doing well now. So I was carrying two carboys, uh, two glass carboys by the handle. And there's, let's see if we crank that. Whoop. So two of those I was carrying with the handles. Bought a plastic carboy, 6.5 gallons. That's a five gallon one I had. Uh, so I was trying them out. And then of course you saw the the SS Brewtech seven gallon little mini conical, which are pretty cheap actually. This probably end up buying a couple more of those. Anyway, I'm getting rid of all of the glass because of this. So what happened was I just finished putting cleaning those carboys that had beers in secondary. And you know, everything's wet. And I was walking in to this garage, and this garage has this epoxy flooring on it. Well, those, those are my flip-flops, which I usually leave closer to the mat. So I kicked off my flip-flops near the mat as I'm carrying two carboys by the handle down low. This isn't the same carpet. I ended up throwing the other one out and uh, got a new one. But as I got close to the carpet, it was wet there and I, I slipped sideways. Like I slipped sideways and I went down and this carboy went up in the air. The other one smashed on the ground. I'm, by the way, I'm still having them in the handles. And it, when it broke, it the glass neck flipped around and it dove into my hand with you know the force of me falling to the ground. And of course, it shattered immediately. And then the other one, uh, I could see it coming over, so I just kind of like let it go and I tossed it and it just exploded on the floor. So there was glass everywhere and I'm bleeding everywhere. Like I I saw my hand right away, so I put direct pressure on that. But when the glass exploded, it sent shards of glass everywhere and I had like probably, no exaggeration, 12 puncture holes in my legs. Small little lacerations and puncture holes that were bleeding all over the floor. It, it took me, because I had to wrap that hand and have some help, it took me probably good near 30 minutes to scoop up all the glass, patch my legs up so that I wasn't bleeding all over the leather in the car, drive to the ER so they could stitch up my hand. 
That was a hell of a night. Lesson to you guys out there, if you're carrying carboys, just be careful. And if not to use glass, get rid of them. It's just, it's not worth it. I actually have a beer from uh, Clement's Homebrew, Kevin. We've done a few reviews on the beers you sent me, Kevin, but this has been sitting in the back of the, the keyser for a little while. It's your Party Gal Stout. As I'm talking and going through what's going on, I'm gonna go ahead and drink this beer and kind of give it a mini review. All right, slight hiss. Oh, by the way, if I do open up a brewery, I think I'm going to use glasses like this. I kind of like this canned glass look. I'm not sure. Still working on that thought process. All right. On the pour, I'm going to keep the clam in there. Yeah, there's a little bit in there. On the pour, it's it's beautiful. It has a... I'm getting like, like chocolate and licorice and coffee and dark fruits like raisins and plums. Anyway, I'm gonna leave that at that and uh, let's start talking about what's gone on so far. So I did register for two beers. One of them I am gonna put Ben, aka Hokey Homebrew, as a collab brewer because we did brew that beer together. Uh, this one did have uh, lager yeast in it and so that one's gonna be entered as a Baltic Porter as Ben is the co-brewer. So that one's going in. The second one is going to be Black Betty. So yeah, I'm doing two dark beers as my entries. Uh, Black Betty is a um, black rye IPA. It's almost a double. In fact, sometimes if my efficiency goes up, it's barely a double. <laughs> um, so um, here we go, Kev. Mm. Mm. What do you got here for an ABV, brother? 8.6, okay. I'm not getting that at all. It's appropriately carbonated. It's got a scant head. It really is appropriate in the flavor all the way through. No off flavors. Tap Boys to the Yard uh, Milkshake IPA, which isn't really a milkshake this time. And because I left out the lactose. And the Strong Ale uh, Voss Kivyak yeast that fermented down to 1.002 so yeah big beer uh, a little on the dry side as expected and I still have the collab pale ale and the coffee IPA I did keg off the rest of my uh, kettle soured mango mango saison which I only got six cans and I blew the keg so it had been going quick a lot of people like that one uh, I'm, I'm using that as a backup in case Black Betty doesn't come out in time uh, for NHC, by the way. That one improved beautifully with age, and I wish now I would have made 10 gallons of it, but I can always brew it again. Uh, also, um, I, I, some of you guys may have seen the canning automation. I actually got to use that when I kegged up, I kegged up all of the porter and the rest of the mango. So that was about a case of beer. And I used the automation for that whole case. It worked beautifully. I'll cut it out and show you that right now. Yeah, as you can see, it's, uh, I, I think I need to like 
rearrange the way things work because I'm right-handed and I have to hand it off to my left hand. It's a little awkward and then probably if and when I build a brewery in the back, I will rearrange it in such that it's actually more ergonomic, uh, more ergonomically aesthetic to the way I, I am, right-handed, yeah. Um, AHA sponsored in Providence, Rhode Island. I will be there with uh, a bunch of other folks. I will be bringing uh, the polo shirts and t-shirts. I would like us to wear them. Whoever shows up and we all get together, I'll hand out these shirts. You can choose which one you want. We need to make a, a, a presence known at NHC. Show a, a basically a, a larger presence there. Uh, this year we tried to become a presenter. We submitted our proposal, but we were not chosen. It's not where we were denied. There was 150 applicants. Apparently only 70 get chosen, 70, 75, something like that. So when I was our first year applying, I don't really think they know who we are. And I think I would like to, you know, make that presence known a little more. And then reapply next year, wherever that is. I know SJ and some of the folks want to want to um, present at NHC. That's about it. I've been trying to catch up on some videos. I know a lot of you. There's some of you that haven't put up since Christmas because uh, I was looking at your channels. Some more beers are going out. I want to see how these two last ones. So I split the batch on the strong ale. It was a 10 gallon batch and I put blood red orange puree into five gallons of that split batch. So I want to see how that comes out. That's cold brushing now. So yeah, I'll probably keg off one of those, either the Colab Pale Ale or the Boys to the Yard uh, double IPA. Uh, it's actually a double New England IPA. And I kind of like that one the most. I'm not, the strong ale is good, but I think it just fermented down a little too much for my, for my taste. The Quebec yeast was insane. I actually was fermenting at lager temps for the first 36 hours. It was about 55 degrees. And I still had to put a blow off tube on the Blickman, which is 14 gallon fermenter. And I only had 11 gallons in the fermenter. So yeah, it raised quite the Krausen, even below recommended ranges. And I'm wondering if that's one of the reasons why it fermented out so low. I don't know. So if any of you um, have used the Voss Quebec yeast, let me know what you've got on a terminal gravity read if it got as low as mine. Because like I said, the first 36 hours was below the recommended range. Yeah, I feel like I'm rambling, guys. Kevin, a uh, really nice beer. It. Uh, A slight bit of booziness on the back. So faint. It's sweet enough to mask it, but um, it's there ever so lightly. Uh, it's not an off flavor. I'm just trying to make uh, describe the beer. Uh, and uh, let's see. Definitely coffee. And it has that coffee kind of rough tongue feel. Very pleasant does not drink like an 8.6 beer. More like a 6.6. Mm. Beautiful. Cheers, guys. And remember, no one's smarter than all of us. Share knowledge and brew great beer.